All right, y'all. Bearded Bros Golf Show. We're back at it again for another week. I am Rod. And I'm Marcus. Uh, last night, I I tried. I stayed up late, 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 trying to catch the end of the LPGA event over in Malaysia, the Maybank. And mm -hmm. it was a really good tournament. I got killed by the, the weather delay. They had an hour and a half weather delay in the middle of their playoff against uh, Celine Boutier. She was shooting for her fourth win against Gino uh, Atikal. Who I must screw her name up. Say it for me. I know you know her name. Ataya Tentacle. <laughs> that still sounds weird. You know Gino. We're going to call her Gino. Um, nine hole playoff is what it ended up being. I think I, the playoff uh, was paused after like hole number one or two. They ended up yep. going a whole nother a whole nine holes uh, with Celine Boutier ending up winning her fourth tournament of the year. Um, she was already number one in the race to the CME Globe standings going into the tournament. Lily Avu on her tail number two did not play in this, and this was a no cut event. So to me, look. Uh, Missed opportunity there. Um, the CME Globe is a $2 million end of the year prize. I would be over there in Malaysia playing if I was Lily Abu, but she made a different choice, needed maybe some rest. Who knows if there, she's nursing an injury. Um, you know, there's three tournaments left. They're going to play one more over in Asia and two more over stateside. So she's got a few opportunities to make it up. Hopefully she travels back this week for their tournament. Um, and then I'm assuming that Celine Boutier with her fourth win also would overtake the Rolex standings back in first place over Lily Avu as well. What do you think about this, man? I mean, she's having a killer season. I didn't realize, you know, I didn't pay attention. Like she was actually keeping up with Gino, who's pretty damn long. Um, Celine's yeah. got some actual, some length on her as well. What do you think about her game? shaping up this year in 2023. Yeah, I was just getting ready to mention something similar. Um, so they were in the coverage talking about how Tentacool is literally, you know, top five in ball striking on the LPGA this tour, which is a, you know, which is a, a statement in itself because everybody on the LPGA is a ball striker. So for you to be top notch in that category and y'all going, you know, toe to toe on that, that was a really nice show. Um, pretty much, I, I caught about half of it, like the second half of it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, Celine BTA, she's really sneaky long. And I think it's because she plays that lower Pearson flight and then just gets the ball on the ground and lets that thing trickle out and roll out a lot more. Because, I mean, if you see her off the tee when she's playing part threes longer and stuff like that, it's nothing for her to, you know, chop off a hybrid, a four hybrid from like 180 instead of, you know, coming into the green with like a five iron and then chasing off and stuff like that. So she's definitely um, a gritty player that you always have to be, you know, have your head on the swivel for because just like um, last night, she got it done somehow, some way. I mean, I was honestly just, you know, you know me, I was rooting for Rosang and, you know, mm -hmm. she got lapped. You, you shoot a two under round and you get lapped out on the LPGA. You know, you start the tournament 18 – or 19, you start the final round 19, get to 21, and don't even make the playoff. Like, that's insanity to me on a side note. But, you yeah. know, Celine Boutier is going to keep going. And, you know, three three matches left. And then probably she's going to get some round, rounds in with the LET tour as well. So, you know, she might win again before the end of 2023. She is yeah. dangerous right now. She really is. Just has the game going, has a good command of where her ball is going. So, you know, shout out to her for just really getting it together, winning ma a major this year and, um, you know, seemingly, you know, competing for the top spot in golf. And, and again, I'm going to sound like a broken record. We want to see people continuing to capitalize on their momentum. I hate one hitters and, you know, you disappear. Absolutely. So kudos to her for really solidifying her season and, and going after that big money prize at the end of the year. Um, quick little side note, not super important, but as the LPGA continues to raise their profile, they have announced the tournament for next year at TPC Boston with one of their biggest wow. prize pools outside of the major um for I think it's a total of 3.5 million. Um, 
which again, outside of a major is one of their biggest prize pools. So I guess they're kind of going along with the whole, um, you know, featured, you know, uh, like kind of the, the guys went to this year. So shout out to the LPGA trying to, trying to put some money in the till for these ladies to be able to compete and, you know, feel like it's something that's worth their while and not having to just play crazy schedules to be able to make a decent living. I just saw that um, earlier this uh, week. So shout out to them. You you get a lot of stuff out of this channel, y'all. A little business knowledge, you know, a little technical golf knowledge, a little BS in here and there. You're you're in a well-rounded environment. (laughs) So uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that membership button. Um, We got you covered on all things golf.